Hello, brethren. You are welcome to today's family devotional. God bless you. My name is Pastor Yemi Omogboyega. With me is my wife, Pastor Mary Omogboyega. We welcome you to today's family devotional. Kindly subscribe to our channel. Please share our videos. Pass your comments as you deem fit. And then press the notification button so that you get to know, to know when we upload new videos. God bless you as you heed this advice. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we just want to appreciate you once more again. For another beautiful day, every time we wake up, to see a new day, I mean, all we can say is your goodness. Father, we thank you. Thank you for your loving kindness. Thank you for your mercies. Thank you for your protection. Thank you for your provisions. Thank you for everything you have done to make life livable for us. Thank you for us as individuals. Thank you for our families. Thank you indeed for our nation and planet Earth at large. Thank you, Lord, for all the works of your hands. We appreciate you, Lord. Thank you for forgiveness of our sins. And thank you for being with us all the time. Above all, we appreciate you for the manual of life that you gave to us, your word, which is our light, the light onto our path, and which is our guide, our everything. Accept our thanksgiving in your holy name. Almighty Father, we really appreciate you for the church of God and how the church is marching forward in spite of all the challenges in this world. Glory be to your name. Be thou exalted in Yeshua's name. Almighty Father, this morning we come before your throne of mercy. Father, please, all our iniquities, forgive us in Yeshua's name. All those who sin against us, we also forgive. Please forgive them, forgive us all together in Yeshua's name. We pray today, Lord, come and speak with us. Tell us what you want us to know. Tell us what you want you to do. Prepare our hearts for understanding and let our hearts be willing to obey your word. And today, let our lives be the better for us. Father, at the end of our race in this world, please let us reign with you in your kingdom. Thank you, blessed Father. In Yahushua's name, we have prayed. Amen. The topic before us this morning is expect your battles and blessings. Expect your battles and blessings. God bless you. So our Bible passage is taken from the book of Proverbs chapter 1 from verse 1 to 7. Please be attentive. God bless you. The Proverbs of Solomon, son of David, king of Israel, for gaining wisdom and instruction, for understanding words of insight, for receiving instruction in prudent behavior, doing what is right and just and fair, for giving prudence to those who are simple, knowledge and discretion to the young. Let the wise listen and add to their learning, and let the discerning get guidance for understanding proverbs and parables, the sayings and readings of the wise. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge, but fools despise wisdom and instruction. God bless you, ma. We thank God for this passage. And uh, the passages we are going to consider along are the book of uh, Matthew chapter 4 to 6. And then we are also going to review uh, the book of Genesis chapter 7 to 9. 9, 17, chapter 7, verse 1 to chapter 9, verse 17. Praise the Lord. The battle, I mean, sorry, the topic, as I said, is expect your own battles and blessings. Um, brethren, life is full of battles and life is full of blessings. 
You have your own experiences, I have my own. But one thing is clear. Every one of us is going to face battles and every one of us we are going to face, we are going to receive blessings. Amen. The book of uh, Proverbs chapter 1 verse 7 says, Fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. Fools despise it. The first battle in our lives is that of either being a fool or a wise person. Either being fools or wise people. And the Bible makes it clear here that fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. So if you want to be belong to the wise group, all you need to do is you fear the Lord. And fear of the Lord is not the fear that God wants to kill you. No, it's reverence, honor, identifying with God, relating with Him, you know, just like you relate with your physical father or mother, your parents. I mean, you feel free with your father, you feel free with your mother, you ask them whatever you need. Now, let us liken two books together in this Bible, the book of Proverbs and the book of 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 16. The book of 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 16 tells us the main purpose or the purposes for which God Almighty gave us the entire Bible, inside which you have the book of Proverbs. Now, listen to me. The main purpose of giving us or purposes of giving us the Bible is summarized in 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 16, which says, All scriptures were inspired by God, and they are profitable for doctrine, that is, believing in God. Believing in God. They are profitable for doctrine. They are profitable for guiding us. They are profitable for correcting us. They are profitable for rebuking us. They are profitable for reproving us. And all these things are to lead us towards living right. That is what you call the righteous life. Living according to the will of God. Take note. Now, look at the introduction of Proverbs 1. It talks about the main purpose of... The, the main purpose... The main reason why the book of Proverbs were written, they are to guide us. They are for us to key into the wisdom arena so that we don't miss our goals in life. And what is the greatest one? You see, the first battle of our lives is either to believe or not to believe God in God. And if you believe in God, you belong to the wise group because from then onwards, God Almighty will be the one that will be guiding your footsteps because you know the purpose. The Bible will never be far from you. And then when you are doing that, you will be studying it the way God wants us to study it. This book of the Lord shall not depart from thy mouth. You shall meditate upon it day and night. That is your compass, your radar will be the Bible. Because everything you look up to God to know is contained in the Bible. And then by the time you get to like this book of Proverbs, it also tells you that, look, anytime you are listening to God, anytime you are listening to God, you are seeking for his ways, you are wise, you are humble, you are ready to learn from him. Amen. And from Genesis to Revelation, Brethren, you will see that life has been full of bad Adams. Okay, God first of all wrestled the world from the chaos it was. So in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. And then God began to describe to us how the world was. 
The world was in disorder and disarray. There is nothing. There was no light. And then said the Spirit of God was hovering over the waters. The whole of the earth was water, nothing else. But everything also, everything was in confusion. Then the battle began. God, first of all, created light, created order, and so on and so forth. For six days, God worked. On the seventh day, we rested. Now God placed everything in place, and including human being. Now, later on, of course, Adam and Adam and Eve were created, and not long after they were created and were placed in a place of comfort, that the devil came to tempt them. Battle number one for them, even as human beings. Now they started, you see. Trust is God spoke when He created man and Adam and Eve. He said. Everything I have created, I have given to you for food. And you are the head over everything. Manage them, till the ground. Do everything so that, you know, all will be well with you. And God will come in the evening to fellowship with them. But the first battle of their life was when they were tempted. Eve was first tempted. And unfortunately, if she failed the test. And Adam too was tempted through Eve. And he too failed the test. Battles began. And all the troubles of this world, they were cursed. The ground was cursed. Everything and many, many things we all know. You see, they lost that battle in the Garden of Eden and they were driven away from there. And from there, we started our own battles of life, which arose as a result of the curses placed upon the now upon the man and the woman. Now, if you look at it, for a woman to give birth today is trouble. It's between life and death. Thank God for his mercies. In spite of God's mercies, we still have mortalities, maternal mortalities. And then even the child the child that is coming struggles to get out of the mother's womb, cries out. The cries because of pains, agonies that he or she was going through. But that child eventually comes to life and, you know, growing up becomes a problem. The parents have to care. They themselves have to care. Everything. Danger, diseases, everything. Battles against all sorts of things. Spirit, spiritual battles and so on and so forth. Then, next, for you to work, sorry, for us to eat, it is full of battles. Our careers, we all know what it means today. Whether you're a businessman or you work for any organization on paid uh, basis, paid salary, salary basis, you know what it means. You don't do everything at your convenience. It's just all battles, battles. And at the end of the day, for you to get promoted, for you to get, you know, it's all battles. And even when you are earning the money again, to be able to save for your rainy day, is a serious battle. Everybody must go through these things. Leave that alone. You want to marry. There are so many women out there. There are so many men out there. You don't even know the right one. It's a battle. You have seen, I mean, look at the ex good examples of the celebrities that are about divorcing. We are talking of celebrities. Local level, what they do is divorce is simple. Sometimes the woman will just pack a load and go. Because you don't see it in the press does not mean that it doesn't exist. A lot of families are in disintegration, but because those ones are um, popular, we, we just got to know about the celebrities. Anyone who wants to know what marriage means, I pray that you don't experience divorce, or you, you don't make the mistake of marrying a nagging wife, or you make the mistake of marrying... Um, a, 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 an husband that is irresponsible, you will discover that there is trouble in marriage, battles upon battles. So, may God give you and I victory over these battles in Yahushua's name. Now, look at raising children. It's all battle. To God be the glory. Bible guides us on all these things. If you want to be rich, labor with your hands. Deuteronomy chapter 28, 1 to 14. 
If you don't want to be rich, just go from verse 15. You will see the curses there. That will not be your portion. That will not be my portion in Yahushua's name. So, to raise your children now, thank God God guides us again. Proverbs um, 22, verse 6. Train your child the way he should go. Unless you put your children on the path of righteousness, of knowing God, to fear the Lord, Proverbs 1, 7, to be on the path of those who are among the believers in God and Christ Almighty, you will discover that the heart of children is so hard that unless you fill those empty hearts when they are and in their youthful ages, unless you fill those hearts with the word of God, you find that the children are difficult to raise. It's a battle for parents to raise children. And then, okay, let's look at it, knowing God that we are saying. Even those of us who are in Christ, there are periods that we are tempted to, to back out. Look at the confusions in Christianity today. Look at the various, what is the meaning of all the various sects we have inside Christianity alone. We are not even talking of Islam. We are not talking of, even amongst the Muslims, there are also different sects. Everybody, according to his beliefs, all of them battles upon battle, even in Christianity. Now, even now, the practice inside the Christianity doctrinal teachings and so on. A lot of discrepancies, a lot of problems that are leading to troubles instead of us even being able to focus on salvation. Many churches focus on money. Uh, many churches focus on affluence. Many churches focus on, in fact, three of them, money, power, and morality, sex in particular. These three things today, are destroying the work, the church of God. Many people fall into temptation of going immoral. Many people fall into temptation of placing money above God. Many people fall into, many churches today fall into the temptation of, you know, many, many, many things like of wanting to gain power, to hold on to power, to control the governments, to do everything. But even apart from all that, even to pray, you have to, it's a battle. To do anything, I mean, to fast, you know? and then how do you do it correctly without hurting yourself? And to even have patience that God can answer your prayers. It's a problem. Many of us, we are manipulating our ways. Now, let's take the examples of uh, Joseph. Joseph started his own battle, envy, battle of envy from his brethren. And they tortured him. He, he moved from being in a peaceful place to a prison yard. From prison yard, God brought him to palace. Amen. He received his battles from his brothers. And then, before he could get to the palace, you think it's a small thing? Somewhere along the line, his life was threatened. He was thrown into the system, dry system for goodness, for, uh, for thank God, thanks be to God that there was no water in that system. He would have been drowned. But to God be the glory, he was victorious. As God Almighty, I don't know the, your own kind of battles today. Maybe it's at work. Maybe it's over your children. Maybe it's over your education. Maybe it's over... Even knowing God, maybe it's over serving God, you will receive victory in Yahushua's name. So there are, you should expect your own battles. There is this uh, saying or type topic it says, "No cross, no crown." Amen. No cross, no crown. If you are expecting, that's why many of us who are going to mountains upon mountains and programs upon programs made the mistake. You went to all those places. And you didn't go back to bend down and work. You are expecting that manna to come fall from heaven. God performs miracles still, yes. 
but the miracles will come upon your preparation. That is, you yourself, you are ready to receive the miracles by, you know, because it is not all the people that labor that really receive blessings. You may toil all the, all your life, you gain nothing. Now, look at Christ, I mean, Joseph received his own battles and, of course, finally, blessings. Then, Christ our Lord had his own battles. Christ has fasted for 40 days. That's where we are talking of Matthew 4 to 6 now. Chapters 4 to 6. He received, he fasted for 40 days. He had all the problems, all the issues, the battle of hunger and everything. Now, he fasted and completed that fasting. Look, he said, temptation came to him in the spirit that the devil took him to the mountain top to tempt him to see whether he will renege from serving God. Tempted him with um, with uh, material wealth. And the whole world I will give to you if you only bow down. When the devil knew quite well, and Jesus Christ himself knew that, you know, uh, that that should not happen. But he resisted. Eventually, he asked the devil to depart from him. We knew. If Christ had yielded to any of those things that Satan promised, the devil promised him, we know that today, what we have will not be Christianity. Amen. Then, uh, if you look at the period of Noah also, Noah was forthright. Every man favored by God. May you receive God's favor. May I receive? It is God's favor that we are receiving that we still are even able to sit down and explain what is happening. And I give glory to God. All the battles of our life we shall be victorious over them in Yahushua's name. Now, um, Joshua, I mean, Noah, Genesis 6, God was angry with the world. Genesis 7, God destroyed the world. Look at the battle of survival. To the point that even it got to a point that Noah had to commit incest for the for life to continue because his daughters had no um, men that they could marry. And they made their father drunk. Look at the battle. In fact, that would have exterminated humanity again if God were not to be merciful. But because God is a merciful God, he gave Noah victory, you will record your own victory in your Joshua's name. It is very important, brethren, for you to understand a new year has come. All of us are farmers. Let me put it that way. Whatever work you do, just compare yourself with a farmer. This year, be ready to lay your hands upon the work and you will experience problems. It was um, Taisho Lari in his days that would say, may the year be rough and tough with you. <laughs> Amen. We all pray that we don't have problems, but problems still do occur because it is inside battles you have victory. That it is inside, if it, was, it is the outcome of battles that blessings come. Amen. So in this new year, or any time of the year, take note, make your, think yourself as a farmer. In my part of Nigeria, by this time, serious farmers have done their plantings between uh, August and November, before the ground got dried. They've tilled the ground, they've planted their seeds, and they are waiting for the rains any time to come, and then the rains will meet them there. Have you prepared? Are you ready to work? What plans are you making for your businesses? And your place of work, are you ready to put in more extra efforts this year so that the, the organization will progress and you too will get better rewards? If you are not prepared for that, you are wasting your time. If you are a business person, what plan do you have for the year? Do you want to increase your production? Do you want to you know, improve your services? Do you want to 
you know, make more money. If you don't plan it and you just pray, your blessings may not come. You need to be ready to face the battle of life. And of course, inside of it is walk and pray. I think it's Romans chapter 9 verse 12 now, or 12 verse 9, I don't know, I can't remember, but check it. It's work and pray. You should be ready to work and pray this year. And God Almighty will answer your prayers as you labor and you call upon God for good success in Yahushua's name. And then, a matter of serving God, like we said, Psalm 1 says, Blessed is he that delights in the word of God. You should delight in the word of God. That is where the only place where you can have succor in the period of your battle. Because when you have hope in Christ, Hebrews 12, 2, eh? the Lord our God, I mean Christ our Lord, the hope of glory. It's only in Christ that when you have hope in him, you have no fear because if Christ himself has said, the battles that people in the world are battling, they are the ones you are facing. But rejoice. The difference between you and the unbeliever is that the unbeliever can commit suicide inside. They can die inside. They can lose hope inside. But for you as a Christian, the, you know that, yes, the battles are there. Battles, my blessings will follow. And so shall it be in Yahushua's name. No matter how terrible your situation is now, remember that the first thing you need to do is fear the Lord. Be on the side of the Lord. You know it's a choice. Deuteronomy 30 verse 19. Life and death, curses and blessings are laid before us by God. But when we act, ready to fight the battle of avoiding the temptations of, you know, re rejecting the temptations that will lure us into doing things that will not be godly, that will lure us not to follow righteousness, then we know that the choice we make is going to be a dangerous one. May God Almighty see us through. Please, in this new year and every day of it, maximize your vision. Carry out your visions. Make sure that no day goes by without you putting into action what you plan for the year. But if you plan nothing, let me tell you, you will be battling for to eat, Papa. And there is nothing as good as when you eat what you like not what you find amen it's a battle if you want to eat what you like live in a comfortable home of your choice ride the type of car you want and do everything good train your children well have enough money to take care of your family and extend love to others you must be ready to face the battle of hard work and praying hard also and then you, you, you hear that again, all those things. That's, why do you need to pray? You see, you can labor, 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 and may amount to nothing. Time and chance, being at the right place at the right time, is what accounts for your good success. I pray for you. Your labors will not be in vain. Your prayers will not be in vain. And then your efforts will never be in vain. Time and chance, being at the right place, at the right time, we favor you this year and beyond in Yahushua's name. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we just want to thank you. Yes, we can see the battles are many, but we are victorious even in advance because we know you. Therefore, Lord, this year, as we begin it well, let us finish it well in Yahushua's name. Let us finish better than we started it in Yahushua's name. As we'll be facing the battles of our lives this year, Heavenly Father, let your Holy Spirit come upon us. Let our angels in Jamaica should do the fights, help us, aid us. Then let angel Gabriel bring the good news, the blessings unto us. In Yehoshua's name. Let our ears hear good news this year. Lord, all the battles of our life, spiritual battles, physical battles, career battles, material 
matrimonial battle, I mean survival battle, everything. Let us be victorious over them all. In Yahushua's name. At the end of this year, let us glorify your holy name. In Yahushua's name, we have prayed. Brethren, you can now see the book of Proverbs 1 7 says, Fear of the Lord is the beginning of the wisdom. Be with, be in the Lord. Then Psalm 1 says, Those who delight in the word of God, their ways, their lives will be like a tree planted by the riverside. And they bring their fruit. Their leaves never go with that. They are always bring their fruit at their due season. So shall your life be this year. Come unto Christ. Enough of your sojourn out there in frustration, in uncertainty, in visionlessness this year. Let be a different year. God Almighty will answer your prayers. Once again, my name is Pastor Yemi Omogboyega and I'm ministering from the Christ Gospel Truth International Ministry. Our office is our, our headquarters is in Yekiti at um, Victoria Tomire Crescent off Adekparusi Street. Adekparusi Street is a major street in Yekiti. If you are living around here and you want to fellowship with us, we are open. Our services are on Wednesdays we have Bible studies from 5 p.m. to 6.15 p.m. Bible studies together with prayer meeting. We close, we you know, do that for one hour, 15 minutes, and you are back home. To be, and women can attend to their family and cook and do everything. Then on Sundays, our services starts at 10 a.m. and we close on or before 12 noon. Inside of that, we have the Bible study, I mean, the Sunday school also. Please, if you are around us, join us. Even if you are not around, wherever you are, stay in tune with us online all the time. We have daily devotional. We call it family devotional, which you are listening to now. Please remember to listen and share it with every other person. God bless you as you, as we serve the Lord together this year. Be victorious. May your battles result into blessings. In Yahushua's name. Thank you, Father. In Yahushua's name, we pray. God bless you. Have a wonderful day. Share your testimony.